Thanks for staying with us. In the next 15 minutes or so, we'll be looking at a bill to exempt companies from paying tax, uh, which is being proposed for debate next week. Uh, this bill proposing the exemption of companies from taxes is set to be debated in Nigeria's legislature next week. The bill, which aims to provide tax relief to businesses, has sparked discussions about its potential impact on the country's economy. Proponents argue that the measure could stimulate economic growth, encourage investment, and support local businesses, while critics caution that it could lead to a reduction in government revenue affecting public services and infrastructure development. As lawmakers prepare for the debate, the bill's future remains uncertain with a focus on balancing the needs of businesses and the state's financial stability. To discuss this with me this morning are two guests, Elvis Asya, legal practitioner, and Shegun Shokwiton, chairman, accountability, candor, and transparency. Gentlemen, good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Okay, let me, stay, uh, let me start with you, Mr. Shokweton. Uh, what do you think about this bill that is going to be debated? What would you say if you were to be part of that debate? Well, first of all, thanks for having me again. Um, first of all, I think that it's important to uh, clarify that um, for me, this bill is superfluous. I, I think that's the word. Um, it's um, ex excess to requirements. Um, I don't know what the lawmaker that is pushing it is thinking, but as we speak, there's an executive deal that is trying to align the entire tax um, environment within the country. There are four tax bills, and this particular issue that this bill is trying to address has been addressed in that in, in that bill, you know, in the in the tax administration bill. So. Uh, even though what's proposed in the tax administration bill is different from what you know this particular uh, yeah, the proposal this bill is trying to achieve, um, I think that what should be happening is, in fact, ironically, I think it was yesterday. I don't know if it happened. You know, I saw a news item that the House of Representatives was supposed to have a public hearing, you know, a public session on that bill on the new tax administration bill. You know, so it, it's been organized by the House of Representatives that this very lawmaker comes from. So shouldn't he have simply either communicated with the committee that is handling, you know, the, the four tax administration bills or put forward his position at that hearing to say, look, why don't we do approach it like this rather than this? Why are you putting forward an entirely different bill when already from the executive, who are the ones that are responsible for tax administration in the country anyway, like, there's a proposal that is supposed to address what he's trying to address. So I think it's important to uh, contextualize that and um, um, say that, you know, one would expect more from, from our lawmakers, you know. You know. So just, just, just to say that, but, but into the substance of the matter, um, I, I think it's absolutely necessary that, uh, coming from a business point of view, that we will look at our entire tax administration um, environment and clean it up in a manner that will ensure that we can encourage growth, but also drive government revenues. I have to lean in the favor of government revenues um, uh, by people because um, Nigeria was simply not generating enough revenues to drive the kind of development we desperately need. We've got 230 million miles to beat, so to speak, right? And we can't do it on a budget of even the 47 trillion that is being proposed now is too small. You know, that 47 trillion naira budget comes to $145 um, um, mm. dollars per, per head, per capita. Uh, what can you do with $140? When you, especially when you compare that to what other countries are doing. South Africa has $6,000 per capita as their budgeting uh, uh, volume. The United States has $17,000, $18,000 per capita. Um, the UK has $17,000 per, per capita. You can just go around the world and look for the numbers. Our staff will always be one of the lowest. You know, amongst our peer countries, is one of the lowest. The only person among the countries that I checked that were higher than is Ghana. You know, apart from that, we're lower than Kenya, we're lower than Egypt, we're lower than South Africa. You know, we are not serious about development. So, for me, the question around revenue, I will always lean in the direction of policies that will generate more revenue. Um, without necessarily killing businesses, because when you encourage businesses to grow, then you actually increase the base of people that can provide the revenues to the government. So I think we need to strike a balance. Uh, exemption 
uh, from the 0.5% um, um, uh, tax, minimum tax, uh, it is a good thing to pursue, but we've got to do it in a way that doesn't starve governments of the required revenue. So what the government is proposing in their own tax administration bill is to have an effective tax rate um, uh, for, for uh, businesses and for individuals. 15%, I think it is for businesses, and um, I think 25% for um, individuals. So that's how exactly that will work. Unfortunately, the details are not contained in that bill. So how do you compute that effective tax rates to ensure that you are not over punishing people, for example, businesses that are not making profits, like this bill proposed by this uh, lawmaker is trying to say, you know, you shouldn't be taxing them, they're making losses. So if you can establish that they're making losses, why are you taxing them? I understand that. But how do we ensure that the ones that are making profits are paying their due taxes? You know, so there, there, there's, there's a number of issues there that, that I think can... Yeah. All right. I was I was going to ask whether uh, making profit or making more revenue at whose expense, mm -hmm. but maybe we should just let mm -hmm. Elvis also respond. Yeah. yeah, Elvis, I was even going to ask because if this is implemented, how do we measure the success or the failure of you know this this new reform? And also, you know, in other countries, for instance, in the U.S., mm -hmm. you hear of um, people having to evade taxes. How are we sure that people are not going to try mm -hmm. to abuse this tax exemption? So how do we just measure um, what this is going to be about when it's implemented? Okay, uh, first, I appreciate the points that it was ever made, uh, which is very correct, yeah. uh, that this bill um, it's pretty much a duplication of the efforts currently going on to reform the entire, the entire uh, tax administration in the country. And to that extent, I don't think the bill is going to see the light of the day. Um, I think uh, at some point, the National Assembly or the House of Representatives may have to uh, stop any further discussions on this bill in favor of the already uh, fairly comprehensive review done and that is being uh, debated at the National Assembly. So I haven't said that. Um, if you look at the bill, uh, what it makes is to achieve is to exempt uh, companies that are making losses uh, from uh, paying minimum tax. You know, minimum tax is a tax strategy um, to avoid tax, uh, you know, it's a tax avoidance strategy uh, by uh, tax authorities globally. Uh, the goal is to ensure that everybody pays um, some form of tax. Because, you know, the tax administrators will rely on the documentation or the records that is produced by the company, that is generated by the company. And the companies can, of course, we know how documents, um, financial statements and all that can be, you know, uh, thought of such a way that to hide profits and all that. So, um, there is a good uh, um, basis, a reason for minimum tax. And so facing that completely is not really the, it's not what is uh, optimal in terms of generating uh, revenue for government. What you, and uh, don't forget that under the current system, you already have uh, various exemptions. Uh, most important, the recent one being that you are exempted if you, uh, you're a small company, uh, you know, uh, generating revenue of less than 25 million. And so, uh, you know, what we should be looking at is fine-tuning it and looking for ways to assist companies, not necessarily to completely say um, you will not pay minimum tax because uh, you are making losses. Now, you have raised a point which is very vital yeah. that, you know, how do you trust that companies will not um, avoid tax by. Uh, they are already doing that currently. You know, uh, currently, in, in during the COVID. Yeah. Um, there was the, um, the 2020 uh, Finance Act, um, you know, uh, amended the relevant legislations to give um, some sort of uh, for companies. And the complaint was that most companies came up and they will say that, oh, their revenue is so so and so much, not to avoid paying any form of minimum tax. So it's, it's not enough to just say you want to piss it out. I think the, the, the unfairness in the system before 
was a, was a possibility that the minimal tax could be computed on the basis of net assets, on the basis of on the bill of capital. But that has now been phased out. So it's now purely revenue-based. Uh, so it is your gross revenue that would you know, determine uh, the minimal tax that is uh, to be imposed. And so, um, in, in that in that sense, I, I don't. I, I think the, the bill, yes, you know, there's good intentions uh, behind it, but you know, it's probably not coming from the point of view of proper research and the proper thoughts on the real world, what is actually doing at companies, and the balancing it with uh, the need for government to generate revenue. And so, in that sense, I would say that this bill should, uh, um, you know, probably should give it a decent barrier. In favor of the more comprehensive, the more research based uh, work that is going on to reform the entire tax uh, system in the country. First of all, what are the. I hate that we have to rush this because our time is almost up. Mm -hmm. uh, but what are the legal implications of uh, a company, for instance, not paying tax? or an individual not paying tax. It seems as if this is something we've always taken for granted, as if there is no, there is no uh, uh, consequence if we fail to do the needful as citizens. I'm staying with you. Uh, about there's that. serious consequences. Yes. Yes, there's serious consequences, legal consequences for not paying tax. In the first place, uh, you, 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 you know, the, the, failure, the failure to pay tax will attract penalties, serious penalties, um, you know, in most cases, you see that most companies, their tax liabilities, are, you see that over 90-80% of the tax liabilities are actually in penalties. I don't necessarily the tax itself. So that is one. And of course, there are other um, uh, criminal, uh, uh, criminal provisions that may also expose company, uh, company administrators and directors to some form of uh, criminal proceedings. In, in, you know, when you fail to pay tax or you get payment of tax as, and all of that. So it's, it's a serious uh, issue and um, unfortunately we don't, we haven't really given much uh, thought. We haven't put in much, much investment in uh, tax administration and in the capacity of the tax authorities um, to uh, investigate, uh, you know, you know, determine uh, tax properly, uh, you know, and what you find is that a lot of uh, there's, there's so much avoidance and complete failure to pay in most cases. Uh, so it's, it's it's serious for 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 every comp for 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 every co every every person, you know, whether either a company or an individual, uh, to uh, fail to pay tax, and it's more and more serious uh, for the country because at the end of the day, um, you know, you had you had you are deficient, you know, in terms of revenue. Um, you know, the, um, my okay. colleague here had you know, made very vital points about yeah. a comparative um, revenue profile of, of countries. Even as small as Kenya, in terms of population, their, their budget is bigger than our own budget. So how can you really deliver, you know, the things that we all are fighting for as a, as a nation uh, if we don't have much uh, enough, enough revenue? Okay. And, all right. Um, quickly, quickly. We have... We have Yes. We have to wrap up now, but in about 30 seconds, Shegun, how do you think that this would, you know, impact the revenue um, for the government as well as, you know, just even public spending as well? So for people, for companies, how would this bill impact them if it's implemented? Well, I think uh, my co panelists has put it very nicely. Um, this bill would get a decent barrier and would be buried. You know, it's, hmm. it's running at barriers with a far more serious, better research to work. Interesting. And it's not going to see the light of day. I think I can really, you know, I know the way you put it, it will get a decent barrier. <laughs> <laughs> that was very funny. Uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, look, generally speaking, say so we should wrap up very quickly. Um, I, I, I think that the, the comment that I would just like to make around all of this is, um, even the work that uh, Taiwo Yedinis Committee, Mr. Taiwo Yedinis Committee is doing, for me, is not comprehensive enough. They need to do more. It's almost as if they are tiptoeing around certain issues. Look, one of the biggest things, one of the biggest problems we have with our revenue generation is that rich people don't pay taxes. The mm. big companies don't pay as much as they ought to pay. What provisions are we putting into this tax administration bill that will ensure that the rich can support the poor of society. So I, I saw, for example, that rich people are still paying 25%. We're not serious as a country. We have a revenue problem. 
and somebody is a multi billionaire in dollars, and you are saying they should be paying 25 percent, in other parts of the world, that guy is paying for five percent. Mm. What we find in some places, depending on what you do, you are paying 50 percent of the earnings, depending on where you get that money from, because it takes 50 percent, you know. Mm. Um, All right, for example, in lotteries, you know, because they assume that you have more than enough left to take care of yourself. So I think our government needs to stop tiptoeing around these issues, get brave, get bold. They say calling that they used to take subsidies away. Let them use it to tackle powerful interests and powerful people, get them to pay the taxes that they are not paying currently. Okay. All right. Yeah, Thank that's so why I just had to bring in the question, which seems like kindergarten uh, are there consequences we should all know but it seems as if the people who should know better are the ones that uh, just jump all this and don't do the uh, the, the needful, needful. Thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we do hope that we'll get it right like you said let this we hope you guys are optimistic that it will get a decent barrier but mm -hmm. we are hoping it will get a decent barrier because we mm -hmm. never know what happens in the national assembly or in the presidency <laughs> or anywhere else but i'd like to thank you gentlemen for coming on this program it's been a real pleasure having you on the show thank you so much thanks thank you thank you have a nice day you too yeah Mm -hmm. All right. We were talking with Elvis Asia, a legal practitioner, and also Shegun Shokpiton, Chairman Accountability Conduct and Transparency, on the fact that some companies or companies may be given tax rebate and all that. But uh, this is where we draw the curtain on the program this morning. It's been a pleasure having you. Thanks for being there. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Mm -hmm. And my name is Rome Paulson. We'll see you again tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Good morning.